Last month, I spent $671 buying subscriptions to 11 of the most popular commercial VPNs on the market on the same day using a fake persona so that there wouldn't be any hint of favorable treatment. Why? Well, I wanted to know if there really was much of a difference between these VPN companies. And do they honor their money back guarantees if I request a refund? Well, not surprisingly, there are quite a few differences. And perhaps a little surprisingly, two of them did not give me that promised refund. Hey there, this is All Things Secured, and I'm Josh. I've been using VPNs for almost two decades now, and although I have ones that I use and recommend more often than others, the beauty of this test is that I can't really inject my opinion here, which is kind of embarrassing because one of the VPNs I have reviewed and recommended in the past was also the one that didn't give me a refund, so ouch. So to be clear, this isn't a VPN review, this is a direct VPN comparison. Let's start with pricing here. VPNs do a really good job of confusing us with pricing because they want you to buy two and three year subscriptions. And they also don't really want you to be able to compare against their competition. So to make this an apples to apples comparison, I opted for a one year subscription with every VPN that I purchased, even if it wasn't the best deal. And to my surprise, the pricing was all over the board. The lowest price VPN, including any taxes, was Pure VPN at $38.95. And the highest was Viper VPN, which hit my bank account for $108.25. Yes, you can save some money when you buy a multi-year subscription, but based on this sample of VPN companies, you should expect to pay an average of $50 to $60 per year on a quality VPN service. Beyond the amount you pay though, you need to understand what you're subscribing to. Every single VPN service I purchased, except one, required that I sign up for auto renewal, which means that unless I go deep into my settings to turn it off, each of these VPNs will automatically charge my payment method to renew the subscription without asking me first. Now, IP Vanish was nice enough to make me check a box to let me know this was happening. I didn't have a choice, I had to check it, but the rest of them just did it automatically except iVPN. iVPN was the only VPN that had automatic renewal off by default and gave me the choice to opt into it. And that's really the way it should be. That's the way they should all do it, but they won't because these companies make a lot of money off of auto renewal. A little side note here, this auto renewal isn't applicable if you pay using cryptocurrencies or cash. And if you want a bit more privacy, these are the VPN companies I tested that offer non-identifiable forms of payment as an option at checkout. Speaking of my identity, what kind of information did I have to give over in order to create an account with each of these services? Now, all the VPNs I tested, except again for iVPN, required an email account. But honestly, creating a burner email account isn't that hard. Strangely, IPVanish was the only one that asked for my full home address on sign up. Like, why are you guys doing that? I don't see the value for them beyond collecting even more of my data. But again, I was able to give them a fake address without any problems, so whatever. Another quick side note that I learned here, this time about your email address. Keep in mind that the address you use to sign up for a VPN is almost always added to the company's marketing database. So over the past month, I've received no fewer than five marketing emails from Pure VPN, which included a newsletter I never asked for, and an unsolicited referral link that I could give to my friends and family. Yeah, no thank you, even now. Weeks after canceling all of these accounts, I still receive marketing emails from Nord, who asked me again and again if I want to renew. The moral of the story here, I don't care which VPN you decide to purchase, I highly recommend using something other than your personal email account. Create a fake account, create an alias, whatever it takes, just don't give them your actual email address. The next test I performed on all 11 of these VPN companies was a simple installation test. How long would it take me after I purchased the VPN to download the software and then get connected to one of their servers? The fastest in this regard was ExpressVPN, which only took 50 seconds. They were really, really user-friendly, but the longest being Viper VPN, which clocked in at over three minutes. Most of them had this whole process streamlined at a little over a minute, as you can see. So other than the outlier, they're all pretty similar here. Each VPN has its own array of features that make them slightly unique, which I won't go into detail here, but you can be sure that they all claim to have the most servers, uh, the fastest servers, highest military grade encryption, blah, blah, blah. But in my experience, at this point, the industry has matured to a point that I think they're all offering pretty much the same product, but using different packaging. Okay, all of this is fine and good, but one thing every VPN promises is 
some sort of money back guarantee. And I waited the full month, all 30 days before requesting the refund for each of these services. And then I timed them to see how fast and easy it would be, or in some cases, how slow and hard. For example, NordVPN blew me away by providing the fastest and easiest refund process. I went on their website, I logged into my account, I made the request and received confirmation of a refund in two minutes and 20 seconds. Not bad. ExpressVPN, Surfshark, Private Internet Access, and IPVanish weren't far behind and each of them allowed me to cancel and get a full refund by simply making a request on the website via live chat support. And that should be the standard, don't you think? We should be able to log into our accounts and cancel the service whenever we please, either with a click of a link or at worst when talking to a live help agent. And yet, many other VPN services make it so hard. Proton VPN, Viper VPN, Pure VPN, WeVPN, Winscribe, and iVPN all required me to send in a support ticket. So we're talking about spending a few minutes with an agent on live chat and then waiting hours or a day or more before getting any kind of email response. Now to iVPN's credit, the refund email was issued within eight minutes. But for the rest of these guys, it was a little bit more painful. The frustrating part of each of the rest of these VPN services is that they all required me to confirm my cancel request twice. What this means is that I sent in a support ticket that clearly stated that I want to cancel my account and get a full refund. And instead of honoring my request, they each asked me to confirm again via email if I wanted to cancel. Yes, I already clearly said that. So why is that a problem? Well, in the case of Proton VPN, if I didn't confirm my cancellation request within the 30 days, even though I sent my initial cancellation request within the 30 days, they wouldn't give me a refund. Now, here's the redeeming thing about Proton. In my email exchange with customer support, they shared with me that Proton has zero access to user accounts. So whereas all these other VPNs were able to log in and cancel my account for me, Proton saying that they've designed their system to be zero access so that even their support reps can't cancel this account if they wanted to. Sadly, despite starting this conversation with customer support prior to the 30 day period, it ended after the 30 day guarantee period and they would not honor a refund. I like Proton, I do, but that's a shame. In the case of PureVPN, their email support ticket landed directly in my spam folder, which I didn't find out until a week after the 30 days had passed. In this case though, when I did find the email and reach out to them, they honored their money back guarantee. So good for them. And finally, Winscribe caught me off guard because they were the only one of this bunch not to offer a 30 or 31 day money back guarantee. Theirs is only three days long. So I guess shame on me for not seeing that sooner, but also what gives guys? you that much better that you don't think that 31 days is a fair trial period? Anyway, so after a month purchasing, using, and getting a refund on 11 different VPNs, what are the key takeaways that you can learn? First, if you're really looking for privacy in a VPN, then iVPN was the only one of the bunch that didn't require my email and allowed for non-identifiable payment methods. Second, if you do have to give over your email address to purchase a VPN, don't give them your actual email address. Use a, a burner account or an alias for that. Third, if you're spending more than $60 on a VPN, you're above average. I'm not saying it's a bad purchase. Heck, I use and love streaming content with ExpressVPN, which costs me $99 a year, but recognize that it's more than you have to. And finally, don't get caught up in all the marketing mumbo jumbo on a VPN's website. There's a lot of what they're saying that's just fancy marketing words and other parts that I think border on deception. I've already done a video on that before though. So if you want to watch that and know what I'm talking about, you can do that next. I'll link to all the VPNs below, which in most cases are affiliate links that help to support this channel. If you'd rather though, you can simply like and share this video if it's been helpful. Take care.